Hi, and welcome to a video on modifying the Fisker Ocean. Today, I want to change the rear emblems, including the one badge and the ocean lettering, from chrome to black. Since the car has a lack of chrome, this seems like a better look to me. Here you can see some before and after shots of this project. Choose a day that has good weather and is not windy. Above 60 degrees Fahrenheit should work best. Let's get started. Here are the tools and supplies I'm going to need today for this project. First thing we need to do is to clean the area by the paint where the emblems are. So I'm going to use some car soap and microfiber cloths with that. I'm also going to use isopropyl alcohol on the emblems themselves to get them clean and wipe them with the microfiber cloth. Also to assist in the cleaning, I have Q-tips to go in and around the edges of the emblems. So that will help. Next thing we need is newsprint or mailers that you get in the post box to cover any of the paint that you don't want to get paint spray on. Also re recommend using gloves. Blue painter's tape to attach the paper to the car. I'm going to use these dental floss sticks to remove any of the extra plastic dip that goes around the edges. You could also use toothpicks. And last but not least, we have the plastic dip itself. I have a original plastic dip in a matte black and also a Rust-Oleum version called Peel Coat in a glossy black. I'm going to do both of these and see which I like better. So let's get on with the installation. As I mentioned, the first step is to clean the area where we're gonna put the Plasti Dip on. So I'm gonna spray this and just generally clean the paint area. Now for the Q-tips, I'm gonna go in and around the emblems, make sure I get all the dirt out of there. Make sure you go all the way around the edges. Want it nice and clean so that the Plasti Dip adheres well. Now I'll use some isopropyl alcohol on the emblem itself. And then buff it. Make sure the surface is all clean. Now we'll do the same thing on the one symbol on this side. And when the Q-tip comes out clean, you know you're done. More isopropyl alcohol and then apply that to the surface of the emblem and then buff it. And we have a one, very clean one emblem here. All right, now we're ready to do step two. We need to cover the area in paper. First thing we do is we put some painter's tape around the outer edge. Now for the paper itself. Now for the one. All right, and there we go. We have the entire area covered. We don't have to worry about any overspray getting on the car itself. You wanna leave a, about a half inch gap around the area that is gonna be sprayed because the extra area here is gonna get peeled off. So that's not a problem. Make sure that this is adhering to the paint as well as possible. Sometimes it's hard to do when you have ceramic coating on the car, but we'll do the best we can. The next thing we need to do is the cans of paint. We need to shake these for a couple minutes to make sure the uh, rubberized paint inside is fully shaken up to make sure that there are no drops when we spray it. So I'll be shaking that up now. 
So after we've fully shaken up the cans, we're ready to start painting. One thing is important to know is it's probably good to be at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit when you're doing this application. You don't want it to be too cold. So it's not too bad right now. These were kept in my house, so they were fairly warm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a thin coat onto the emblem itself. And then I'm going to wait about five to 10 minutes for it to dry. And then I'll do more coats. So what it'll be is I would say best to do eight to 10 coats of the Plasti Dip. And what you wanna do is you wanna spray it about six inches away, at least six inches away from the surface. And you wanna do it at different angles. So for example, since the emblems are 3D, you're gonna to want to angle down, angle up, and angle to the sides as well as straight on to get best coverage. So I'll do my initial coat. All right. Another suggestion is try not to do this when it's too windy outside. I'm fairly inside my garage, so it's not too bad. But if it's windy, it could affect the spray and the coverage. So it's best to do it on a still day. Okay, now I'm gonna do this with the Rust-Oleum, and it's gonna be the same procedure, except this is gonna be glossy. So I'm gonna compare the two and see how it looks compared to the matte finish. So I'm gonna apply it right now. All right, I've done my first coats for both sides. I'm going to wait about five to 10 minutes until it's dry. And this depends on how warm it is outside and the relative humidity. And now we're doing the second coat. One thing I wanna add is that when you're doing these coats, do them very smoothly across the entire surface and also try to do it at an even distance. You don't want it to get too wet because if it gets too wet, it will have drops, which doesn't look good. Now for the one again. All right, and now for the glossy Rust-Oleum. All right, we are done with the second coat. We will let this sit for 10 minutes. And now we're on to the third coat. One thing I'm noticing so far is that the matte Plasti Dip is, I think, a thicker application than the glossy Rust-Oleum. The glossy Rust-Oleum, you can see a gloss, but it seems thinner. It's not covering the silver as much. All right, now we're on the fourth coat. Another thing I noticed is that the Plasti Dip Matte seems to dry a lot quicker than the Rust-Oleum Glossy. So I'm going to start coat five. And here we go. We have five coats applied. And as you can see, the Glossy Rust-Oleum seems to have like a, kind of like a black chrome appearance to it. Compared to the Plasti Dip, which has more of a solid black. Of course, it's in a matte finish. Hard to say which one I like better. Because I'll most likely do one or the other as I think it looks a little odd if I do them different. So one thing that's nice is that I can apply a top coat to any either one of these. 
I could put the glossy on the Plasti Dip if I want, or put the mat on the glossy. So I don't have to remove it all. Gotta let that dry, and I have a few more coats to go. We are now ready for coat number six. On with coat seven. We are on our final coat, eight. Another good thing to know is when you're done with the painting, turn the can over and spray to clear out the nozzle. I am all done with spraying the Plasti Dip in Rust-Oleum, and now I can remove the protective paper. And now it's gonna be time to use the floss picks that I showed you earlier. And also if there's any of the Plasti Dip that gets stuck to the paint, you can use a Q-tip to remove it. I'm gonna start on the one first. All right, so notice that it will stick to the blue tape and I am just gonna peel it off. Best to peel it at an angle. And if you have any sections that don't come off correctly, you can push them down. Now for the inside, you can use this here to remove the inside. Just gently peel to separate it from the emblem. Or if you like the black inside it like that, you could leave it as is. But I'm going to remove it so you can see the paint. Like I said, you can use a Q-tip too to help out. This is the part that's pretty tedious, so you got to take your time. So just loosely pull it up and it should detach from the edges and not the lettering itself. Just be very patient. Sometimes it helps to stretch it a little bit. All right, got most of it off pretty easily. Now the inside areas here are gonna be the tough parts, but the edges here, you can just use the floss and just get all the extra Plasti Dip out of there. Should come out, just be very careful around the edges. Nice thing about using the floss, it's plastic, so it's not gonna damage anything. And the nice thing is if you miss anything now, you can always do it later on. It's not a big deal. Now that I'm doing this, I would suggest not using the Q-tips since the paint still may, may be a little wet and you don't want any of the cotton fibers in the paint. So the dental floss uh, stick here is probably the best bet. Little area here that is uh, being a little difficult. Sorry if I'm blocking the camera. Almost got this whole end done here. There we go. Now for the inside of the A, a little bit more difficult since it is a small section. Just be care careful of the edges. A is done. Gonna work on the E. E is done. Now for the C, trying to get on the inner edge and kind of rolling it so it goes off in one big piece. The letters with the larger openings are easier since obviously you can get the tool in with less uh, effort. And last one is the O. And as expected, the O is moving along pretty nicely. And there we go. And like I said, if you miss anything, you can always go back and get it out later. Not a big deal. The project is now complete. Here's a look at the one badge, and it has a nice matte finish with the Plasti Dip. 
The great thing about Plasti Dip is if you want to change colors or go back to the original finish, it's easy to do, just peel it off. Also, if you make any mistakes, you can also peel it off and start over again. Not so easy to do with regular spray paint. And now the ocean lettering. Note that the glossy finish is not as noticeable as I thought it would be. I would suggest more coats if you're using the Rust-Oleum product. It does seem to spray on thinner than the Plasti Dip. Let me know in the comments which one you prefer. I feel this is an easy modification that you can do yourself. There are no downsides. If you make a mistake, you can just peel it off and start over. The more coats you use, the more solid it will look and last. I did this project on my Tesla Aero covers over five years ago. The Plasti Dip has lasted very well considering wheels are probably the toughest use case for this. The emblems should last much longer. If after a year or so you do notice the surface becoming dull or discolored, you can always spray on a couple more coats to refresh it. Also, it's best to do this project outside and when the weather is not windy. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. The products I used are listed in the video description. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.